So, in this lecture we will discuss one important object oriented paradigm is called the inheritance. We have discussed the encapsulation, then inheritance is the another important object oriented paradigm. In today's lecture we will discuss about the inheritance. Uh, so, first we should learn about the concept and then how this concept is basically implementable in Java program. Now, inheritance is very common concept is a biological term although and you know exactly the inheritance means basically inheritance a ch ch children inherits from its parents or whatever it is there. So, the concept it is like this and then single inheritance means if it inherits from one only one entity and multiple inheritance means if one entity inherits from the multiple entities. So, concept it is there the both single as well as multiple inheritance and then inheritance can be also hierarchically with multiple levels. So, multi level inheritance. So, children inherits from the parent, grandchildren inherits from the children like this one. So, these are the concept actually very common it is there, but so far the object is concerned the concept it is also there. Here for example, if we consider animal is a kind of object then animal has the different other type of objects. So, herbivore, carnivore like this one. So, here animal is a general whereas, herbivore is a special and if we see the lion and hyena they are more special. So, from generalized to more specialization is the concept of inheritance and this is called the EJ concept that means, lion is an animal, hyena is an animal. So, is a EJ concept. So, they are followed they are basically related to the is a relationship and there may be many hierarchy that means, that hierarchy means it is in the different level. So, this is the concept of there. Now, here inheritance in Java is very useful for many reason. The first reason is that using inheritance we can create given a class another class. So, the concept of this thing is very important here. Now, so this concept is basically given a class we usually call it is a super class and if we can create another class from this class then this is called the sub class. As an example here we can see vehicle is a super class whereas, car and the truck are the two sub classes. Similarly, fire truck is another sub class of the class truck. So, here truck is the super class of the sub class fire truck. So, this basically says that we can create the number of classes inheriting from its super classes. Now, what is the concept of inheriting? Okay, we will come to this discussion about the what basically a sub class will inherit from its parent class. Now, this inheritance concept is very important in Java program it is because reusability. So, if we have a class say track then we can share this code of the class track and then we can implement some other code in fire track. So, it is basically code shareability or the reusability even the maintainability the code maintainability is very important aspect which can be done using the concept of inheritance. Now, how the inheritance of a class is possible? So, there is a syntax in Java program the inheritance in a class is possible by means of one keyword called the extends. So, here the class this is the name of the sub class which basically you want to inherit and this is the name of the super class that from where you have to inherit and this is basically the code of the sub class in addition to the code or the method or members which is there in this sub class. So, here basically all the codes which is there in super class is also accessible here in this method. So, this way basically the idea of the code reusability come into the picture. So, this is the idea about that these things can be done using inheritance. Now, let us see some example, so that we can understand about this uh, idea about the inheritance. Very simple example that we are going to discuss about. So, suppose uh, there is a class called the 2D point. So, 2D point is a class and we want to inherit another class called the 3D point. This means that 2D point if it has some members and methods then all these member and method may be uh, is available to this 3D point or we can say that some method can be overridden that means, it can be redefined in this method. Now, let us see one example. So, here is basically the statement of a class point 2D it has 
two members x and y and display is the method. So, the, these are the composition of this class. Now, here point 3 d which basically inherits point this is basically point 3 d inherits point 2 d. So, it is so it should be corrected this is point 2 d. So, the point 3 d extends point 2 d that means point 3 d inherits from the class point 2 d and here we can see we declare integer z as a new elements on it. This means that for this class point 3 d all these things which is there also use accessible here. So, this means that x y and z all the three members are available to this or members of this class point 3 d. However, again you can note it the display method which is there in point 3 d also it is there. However, the method which is defined here and there they are different. This means that this display overrides the superclass method display. Now, on the other hand if we write say display 1 and display 2 then the two methods are there and here with this change what is the idea is that like x y is available to this class point 3 d similarly display 1 is also accessible to this method this one. So, this basically if point 2 d is a generalization concept is a general then point 3 d is a special one that means it has many more things other than the point 2 d itself. So, this is the concept of inheritance and this is obviously an example of single inheritance and as it is a very simple example we uh, usually call it a simple inheritance example. Okay, so, this is this is the idea about the simple inheritance simple inheritance and here is the main method that you can declare. Now, if you can look at this method little bit carefully you will be able to see these are the object that we have created for 2 d class point 2 d and point 3 d and these are the basically initialization. Similarly, here the initialization of the point 3 uh, there is basically point, point 2. Okay. So, this is basically initialization of point 2. Now, here if you see in P 2 being a point in class uh, basically point 3 d x y is accessible. So, this is the idea is that okay, by means of by virtue of inheritance all the members and methods are accessible with the object of subclass. So, this is an example of the simple inheritance that we have discussed. Now, we quickly discuss about what are the different type of inheritance that is possible uh, in Java program. Now, this is an example of single inheritance. So, if we can derive a subclass from a superclass, this is a simple inheritance we can say. Other than simple inheritance, the, there may be more than one class can be derived from the same class. So, it is called the multiple single inheritance. For example, here subclass 1 is derived from the superclass subclass 2 is also derived from the superclass subclass 3. So, this is another type of inheritance and again a subclass can be derived from a superclass, another subclass can be derived from another subclass this all. So, it is called the multi level single inheritance. Other than this multi level sin, sin, in, in, sin, in, single inheritance there is a concept of called the multiple inheritance. Here for an example this class inherit from this and this. So, if a class inherits from the two classes then it is the example of multiple inheritance and here is basically the hybrid example. Here for example, this class inherit from this one this. So, this is a single however, this class inherit from this one. So, it is called the hybrid inheritance that means both single simple as well as multiple inheritance are there. Now, however, the super Java program is, is concerned all inheritance are not possible rather in Java we have only single inheritance multiple single inheritance multi level sin, single inheritance are possible. Whereas, the other two are not possible Java does not support multiple inheritance as well as hybrid inheritance. Now, let us have little bit bigger example about inheritance. Uh, may be multiple uh, multi multi 
full single inheritance we can say here for example, person is a general class and then student is another sub class which can be derived from the person similarly employees also another sub class can be derived from the person. Now, what is the actual idea about this inheritance that can be understand about it here basically person may have some data as well as method of its here for example, these are the different composition of the person. Now, let us come to the student it has another right and this is the another. Now, what it does mean that what it does mean that that the student met student class has all these things in addition to this one. Similarly, employee class has all these things in addition to this one. So, for an employee class all these things are available for a student class all these things are available. So, this is the idea about that okay, by means of inheritance all the codes which is there for example, these methods are nothing but code can be accessible to this one all the codes which is there also accessible to the employee class. So, code reagility is there. So, by means of inheritance we can have this one. Now, here quick uh, Java programming features uh, programming concept of this one uh, as an example we can say about say class person that we have declared whatever the idea that we have mentioned here written in a Java code like okay. you can relate to the figure pictures that we have shown in the last slide is basically related to this one this is the car class person is a general class and now student class can be defined like. So, having this person is okay, to us then we can have the student class which basically extends person class. So, it is there next. So, this way the person class can be declared about and now here you can see uh, here the print data which is declared in uh, this method here is also used here to print the by data of the student uh, class like this one. Now, so this is the class student which has been inherited from the class person. Now, likewise we can have another inheritance the employee, employee also can be inherited from the class person which basically has this one and whatever the different methods are there we can declare here. So, this way the class student and class employee is more what is called the code than the class person itself and inheritance is the utilization of this one. So, once the all the classes are used then in your main class we can use those things and you can process them here for an example we use the main method where the different objects of the class can be declared individually as if they are the new class of their own. So, this way the single inheritance is possible. Now, the concept of inheritance is like this is very simple not very difficult to understand that is why Java makes the thing so simple only allowing single inheritance and this inheritance can be gone into another level. The same thing if I say suppose regular employee extends employee then permanent employee temporary employee extends employee. So, that two other two different classes can be inherited from the employee after the part employee is inherited from person like this one. So, this way extension has no limit to any level we can go. Now, here is an another good example so that you can understand about it. So, there are many geometrical objects. So, all objects are of general type and then they can be of special type. So, for example, 1 D object, 2 D object, 3 D object. On the other hand, if we consider the 3 D object, they are again different type, 2 D object different type, 1 D object also different type. Now, further uh, what is called the specialization also can be done. For example, 2D object can be of the further specialization like triangle, quadrilateral and so on. Quadrilateral may be another specialization rectangle, parallelogram this one. Now, this kind of inheritance hierarchy. Now, if you want to create a program for manipulating all geometrical objects. So, first we can create the geo objects which basically has all the common attributes in it then whatever the special attributes slowly can be added into its inherited classes and then finally, the classes at the bottom level can be obtained they are basically the more refined or more specialized class that needs to solve your problem. So, this is the concept that is followed there and now okay, you can write the programs for implementing all the type of objects that we have listed in a this taxonomy. So, this concept can be uh, extended like this one. 
Now, we will discuss about one concept the method overlading in the example of point 3 D inherited from the point 2 D we have discussed about method overriding that means, the there are there, there is a method display which is basically defined in both the classes. If we declare a method which is already defined in a super class, then the method called overriding method. So, that means, you have to override the method. So, this concept is called the method overriding. So, method overriding it is basically required that the method that we have declared in a super class can be can uh, sometimes needs to be redefined here. So, if you want to do the re redefinement then we can do it like this one. So, this is again continuation of the previous example that we have discussed about here the display method which is declared here the this display basically override this display and then we can use it here in this program as we can see it is here. So, this method as uh, we can as we can see here this method as we can see here. So, point 2 D uh, p is a point of 2 D class and point 3 D q is a point of uh, 3 D class and here you can see x is another class which we have created which basically up casting that means, q is a point of 3 D, but we can cast into 2 D using this kind of special features are there. So, type casting we will discuss in details later on. So, then we x dot display then this basically we will call the display method of this class although in q it is overridden. So, it is like this way we can have the access of this one this concept is called the dynamic uh, binding. So, dynamic binding is the one kind of runtime what is called the scope rule. So, scope rule will be decided from which because if we cast with others then binding will be different and so on. So, this uh, dynamic uh, binding will be demonstrated in our practical class so that we can understand these features more clearly. So, this is the idea about method overriding it is there. Now, regarding this uh, inherita inheritance concept one thing that we should note that a subclass object can refer a super class variable or method if it is not overridden that means, all the methods and variables are accessible to the subclass if it is not defined in that class itself. On the other hand a super class that means, the reverse is not possible that means, a super class cannot access any variable or any method which is defined in the subclass. So, one way traffic it is actually. So, we can access in from the subclass platform only but super from the super class platform other than the method or variables defined in the super class we cannot access any things from the subclass. Now, there is another very important concept it is called the super keyword which basically used for many purpose. So, super keyword has the many uh, impli implication in this using this super keyword in Java one can use uh, one can refer immediate parent class variables they are basically instance variabilities there. Super also this keyword also can be used to invoke parent class method and super also can be used to invoke parent class constructor. So, there are many use of the super class in our subsequent slides we will see how the super class can service the three different facilities referencing variables, referencing method and referencing the constructor those are there in super class. Now, this is an example if you can look at this example little bit carefully you will be able to understand that okay, this is basically an example using the super keyword where we can refer parent class instance variable. Now, let us see uh, in this example we can see this color is a variable which is declared in a class animal and dog is another class which extends animal and in the dog class we can declare again the color variable. So, this color is basically uh, overridden variable that means, this color and this color they have the two different scope. Now, here if we see in the super class the variable color is white value is white whereas, in dog it is black. 
Now, in the print color method which is basically new methods in the class dog, it basically if we refer this color then this refer to this color, but if we want to mention that this color I want to mention which belong to the super then I should write super dot color. So, this super dot color will refer to this value whereas, this color will refer to this one. Now, having this kind of uh, concept now let us see this is basically one of the main program. So, here d an object of type this class is and then d dot print color we will call it and whenever it call it then it will basically show the output which will look like this. So, output is okay, because of this first print color color black because this one and then super color white. So, these are the two output is there. So, this is the concept that super keyword is used to reference the parent class instance variable. Now, this is this has another also use it is called the like the so referencing the parent class variable the super also can be used to reference the parent class method. The method is the concept is same as the previous one. Now, again look at this example here the animal is another class which has the method eat. Again in the dog which is an inherited from the in inhale when subclass of the super class animal it also declare eat. This means that this method is basically an overriding method than this one. So, this method has its own which has the scope within the class dog and this method has this kind of print statement. Now, bark is the totally new method belong to this and work is also another method which is defined this. So, bark and work are the newly added method in the class dog. Now, where now you see the work method which is a new method in the class dog it call this one. Now, is super dot it you can understand what it does mean it means that this is the method of this whereas, bark is the as usual because there is no resolution and then it is basically this one it. So, this basically resolve the namespace. So, it method belongs to this if it is prefixed by super dot and these are the method it is there. So, so using this super method we can refer that this method belongs to whether it is a super class method or belongs to the sub class method if it is overridden. And this is an example of uh, this one very simple you can understand d the dog object is created and d dot work if we call you can guess that what output it should give it you obviously, you can check that the output that it should give you this one. So, dog work super dot it it is basically eating then bark it will barking and then eat again eating bread. So, this kind of uh, output you can see it uh, if you run this program. So, this concept is the concept of that using super class we can resolve uh, the parent class method than the base class method. Now, uh, this is the another example uh, of use of super class is basically invoking the parent class constructor. We will use this kind of construct frequently in our subsequent program. So, we, we should understand it very clearly. Again, this is a super class, this has one constructor animal. So, this is the super class constructor. Dog is the another class, is an inherited from the super class in animal. So, it is a subclass of animal, and here if you see dog is a constructor, and the, this dog constructor we use the super. This means that if we use this say this dog will also call this super class constructor that is then animal is called here. So, is basically if you writing this one means it is a super class constructor is called here and then finally, dog is own method. So, this means that in this constructor we has the two print statement this and this as well as this one. Now, if we run this test case and then if we run this one then you can see that this kind of output you can get it animal is created and dog is created because of these two things are there. So, this is the concept of the use of super here the super keyword. So, that if we write super within parenthesis this indicates that it will basically call the parent class constructor. So, so super ok we we can see that super is a very important keyword we have used similar kind of keyword this earlier 
and then another keyword new also earlier. So, those new this and super are very important keyword we will understand also few more keywords uh, later on. Now, uh, this is another example of invoking parent, uh, parent class constructor using the super this example similar to the previous example previous example was pretty simple here you can see point 2 d is the super class 3 d is an sub class and here he, whenever we create a constructor point 3 d we will construct this one that means we can now here again you can note that in point 2 d there are two constructors so super if we call then which constructor it will refer to actually it depends on what kind of arguments are there if we call this kind of argument then this is basically referred to that 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 constructor which matches its argument for example here super is a default constructor on the other hand we could write that super using these are the say three different value then that constructor will be called here so it depends on so using the passing proper argument which matching to that constructor when the super will refer to that constructor so so this is the idea about uh, the super constructor is there and whenever we use this kind of inheritance one very important concept is that dynamic method uh, resolution. So, this concept is basically runtime polymorphism if we create many object many object many object finally, which belongs to the method belongs to which object it little bit uh, confusing. So, that confusion can be avoided by means of uh, okay, if you can understand this concept little bit carefully. Now, one example can be given so that you can understand about that which uh, binding that means, which are the method okay, reflected to a particular call. Now, we can consider this example here. So, bike is a super class, the splendor is another sub class which has the run method you can see run is overheating method here and after this declaration of the two classes super class and sub class we have the main method declared here. Okay, so, it is very simple. So, so, b 1 is an object of type this class that means, if we run b dot run, so it will run this method. On the other hand here bike b 2 that means, we create an object of type b 2 and b 2 dot run the resolution is quite easy that this method will be run in this case. On the other hand now come here this is little bit tricky. Now, here we create an object by means of this uh, memory allocator then spender, but actually we cast it and then we store it b 3, but it is type of the bike object. And then if we call this b 3 dot run, so, so then which method will be called here. Actually in this case as it is the object of splendor, although it is b 3 run, we should not confuse that this b 3 as the object of class bike then this run is this one is not like that as it is basically splendor. So, it is run this means that dynamically so b 3 dot run is changed from this method to this method. So, it is called the runtime polymorphism and it has many utilization those utilization we will discuss when we will discuss about the packages and others. So, if we have to store many objects in an array and then objects of different type then better idea is that that array can be declared of the super class object type. And then if it is declared super class any sub class object can be put into that array and it can be processed in irrespective of the different object. So, this is the one good example of the uh, runtime polymorphism in the Java. Now, this is another example is okay you can guess that what output it will give it to for you. So, a this is a super class, this is a derived class, inherited class, sub class and this is the main method and you can understand that how it can. So, you just look at this point and then you can try to give the answer then you can understand that way that you have understood it or not. So, if you run it this program and it will give this kind of output you can say and the, the you can resolve it how it is basically giving this kind of output. So, this basically the idea about that uh, if, if uh, inheritance is there you have to little bit uh, clear about that how the different method is called there. Now, I will quickly okay, discuss about two more important concepts in Java one is called the abstract class and another is uh, the final class. A class can be declared as an abstract if you declare an abstract class 
then its all method and uh, all uh, data member also can be declared an abstract actually. So, abstract class is basically the class which does not have any method to be defined clearly or the method can be kept as a void that means without any code. Now, abstract class as it is it does not have any code or any other thing. So, that obje any object of that class cannot be created. So, it has certain properties like an abstract class it is declared by means of a specifier is called the abstract and it can have again abstract method and non abstract method all the method that we have discussed so far non abstract if a method is prefixed with abstract keyword then it is called the abstract method it cannot be instantiated. This means that no object can be created for an abstract class and it can have final method. If the an abstract class has a final method, then that object cannot that method cannot be overridden in its derived class. So, this is the idea about the abstract class and then <coughs> so abstract class is like this. So, if we can declare a method no object is uh, can be created, but it can it can be used to uh, derived many classes from it. It is basically gives a template. Template means this is a generalization uh, concept that this one whose ultimate implementation will be done uh, when we uh, uh, derive the subclass. Then the final keyword, the final keyword is very uh, one is a strict keyword we can say that if we can declare a final then this final class cannot be used for inheritance. So, no class can be derived from the final class that means final class cannot be a super class and in addition to the declaration of a class as a final we can declare any variable any method in a class as a final also. If we declare a variable as a final so that variable cannot be overridden in any derived class and if a method is declared as a final. So, same method cannot be overridden in any class objects. So, final in the sense final that it is basically no more implementation in any derived class is possible. Now, here is an example uh, here we can see uh, the class bike is declared as a final this means that this this will give an error because it is not permissible. So, this is an error. Okay, so, we have discussed about the basic concepts that is related to the inheritance of classes in Java programs. Now, there are many more questions that can be answered in subsequent classes. For example, can we inherit a class from other class which is defined in other package. Now, the here concept of package first should be learned so that we can give answer to this question. And then information hiding that is on another pending job that we will discuss in our uh, next um, lecture hours. Thank you very much.